welcome to Election Central Brantford. And we're here with our special guest, as you guys all know, Dave Levac, MPP and Speaker of the House. Thank you for coming out. We really appreciate it. Absolute joy. So, getting to know you, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> we have history. Yes, we have history. <laughs> Lots of, yeah, because you're a teacher yes. um, in, in a former life uh, before you were a politician. And, you know, I was a little guy going through a lot of stuff with the school and school system and everything else. And I re always appreciated your um, support uh, as that because you didn't talk to me as a little guy, you didn't talk to me or talk at me. I always appreciate that you talked to us yeah. as students. And that's one thing I've always appreciated by you. So I thank you for well, that. Well, I, I, I thank you for that yeah. uh, acknowledgement. And uh, quite frankly, it does give me flashbacks looking at you as this grown adult now. And, <laughs> uh, but I always started on the premise that you are going to be an adult. Yeah. And that uh, at the end of the day, I have a firm belief that everyone, regardless of where they start in life, mm -hmm should have an equal opportunity to end in life as equal. Mm -hmm. So when you start that kind of understanding, uh, I don't see disabilities or, or inabilities as anything else other than one more thing to go through mm -hmm. to get to that adult life. Mm -hmm. So um, I could see in you, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is reminiscing now, yeah. <laughs> I, I could see in you the, the person that I knew you could be. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. And, and that you've done well. So I, yeah. I'm glad to see that happen. And, well, and any small part that I played or the other groups of people that you've mentioned in the past, yeah. uh, other teachers and other uh, staff members and family members, yeah. th that, that speaks to what we are, that what we're community. Yeah. And, and that led me to this particular job. And that is I truly strongly believe in my community mm. and that whatever I can do to enhance our community through government, mm. uh, regardless of what political stripe, uh, that's what we sh we're there to do. Uh, I, I'm there to serve, and yeah. I'm there to bring our message to Queen's Park and not Queen's Park to our community. Totally get that. And that to me yeah. represents exactly how I taught. I taught with the same, uh, same kind of concept of that mm. we are going to build a community and we're all part of it. Nobody gets left behind. I totally get that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and now, from that, now all those students that, that you were with and touched and <laughs> oh, moved, yes. moved touch, I would say moved, touched and inspired yeah. into doing great things with the community and now you're seeing the end result. And that's pretty cool. It's a good feeling. Yeah. It's a good feeling that we can be better and that yeah. we can always strive to be better yeah. because there's always things that we need to improve. Totally. Got always that. do. Yep. That's awesome. And well, we can go right into the question. Sure, I, let's I, go. I, let's you know, unless there's anything else you wanted to share with the public, what did you want to share with the public right now that you feel that they should know about you? Well, actually, in, in the hall, you do have a good tie with our, our Polish hall. So you've been a large supporter of the Polish hall, so we thank you very much for that. Right. Like, even in the years when you've been in office and, and even before that, you yeah. always came out and did something. And we're in the vet's room right now, which was the inspiration of doing all this. And you do the thank a vet. Yeah, I, as a matter of fact, uh, if I did have anything to say to the, to the generation present, be very respectful and understand and listen to the story that the veterans, particularly the Polish veterans who had to do things differently, who were under different regimes, we sometimes need a reminder that in North America, Canada, Ontario, and Brant, we haven't had to face the things that they faced yeah. and we need to hear their story and be respectful of what they went through in order yeah. to achieve the democracy that regrettably there are times where we take it for granted or assume that it's not good. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, there's warts and yes, there's improvements we need to make, but those Polish veterans have mm -hmm. gone through and they're still alive, some of them. Yeah. They're still here. They're still here, yeah. And, and the Hungarian. And, yeah. And, and like Everybody. A, a, a Ukrainian. Yeah. And now we're uh, duplicating oh, again. Oh, yeah, right? exactly. Eh? Yeah. So my passion lies with the next generation and I want to tell them, please listen to the story. Make sure you respect them. Make sure you hear what they're telling us. They actually have been telling me, here we go again. Yeah, and that, know, that's eh? regrettable. But having said that, uh, that's one of the reasons why I was so respectful and I wanted to thank a vet to continue because oh, there's yeah. more than just the Canadian involvement in the story of democracy. Right. Hungarian Revolution, Polish Revolution, the, the Polish fighting in the war for us as allies. Yeah. We're all, we were all in this together and we wanted to see and they felt so strong because they experienced what it was to have their democracy removed mm -hmm. and taken from them and have somebody's boot on their throat. We haven't had that. That's true. And we need to learn from that and build that passion up that says, ah, now I get it. So yeah. my encouragement yeah. would be to have that conversation and then understand that 
my democracy is delicate. Yeah. My democracy is very gentle, and and it's got it's got some opportunities to be taken. Uh, so so yeah. get involved in political activity. Get involved, and it doesn't be every day. Yeah. I'm exactly, talking about yeah. voting. I'm talking yeah. about participating. And yes, there's warts. And yes, you could use that as an excuse not yeah. to participate. Right. Well, they're all a bunch of liars. They're all yeah. a bunch of this. They're not. Yeah. They're not. My colleagues from all parties, there's tons of them who are there for the right reason. Yeah. They have different ideas and different philosophies. And some are more aggressive than others on saying, you're evil, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. But for the vast majority, they're there to serve and they're there to make their community better. So get involved no matter what party it is, no matter what level it is, get involved. And then from those elections, you're now picking those people who were the Polish veterans, who were the <laughs> yeah. people that actually yeah. picked up arms and lost their lives for yeah. us. That's dedication. Yeah. So that you know, got me going. I yeah, can tell good, I can feel no, the passion. No, uh, uh, yeah, and that's great because this is what we want. Right? Yeah, that's this what is, I'm going. Yeah. That's why we need to be respectful. That's why yeah. we need to show uh, the ultimate yeah. sacrifice that they give and say, unbelievably, you gave that for us. Yeah. And then, and then Steve, some of them were, were, were 15 years old. Yeah. They lied about their age, 15, yep. 16, 17, 18. They didn't have to go until they were 18. 15, 16, 17, 18 yeah. lied about their age because they felt so passionate about what their experience told them that we have to have democracy. Yeah. How well, many kids other, today would do that? Yeah, and the other part on that was, uh, just to speak on that point, was uh, a lot of those who wanted freedom, right, or actually safety going through Europe, like my uncles did, uh, they joined at the age of 15 in order to allow the rest of the family to travel safely through Europe to go to wow. Central Africa into the different camps that they had out there. And my one uncle had scarlet fever and my other uncle went off, like they were twins, so the one went off oh, and, wow. and joined in. The other joined in later because when he got better, but that was to give free passage, safe passage to those who fought with and the And that's yeah. the stories I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. They are the personalized stories to yeah. be handed into family yeah. and family to share. Yeah. That's why this, what we're doing right now, is yeah. really important. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's yeah. about the story that needs to be told to engage the yeah. public, to let those people know out there yeah. that that's why we want to respect the, the veterans. That's exactly. why we want to say thank you. That's why yeah. we want to say your personal story is important to me. Yeah. And that's why thank a vet is so important. It's not, it's not just about an event we have once a year just to have a dinner. Although no, that's the not, premise not. behind it. That's right. To no. pull them together. Honor those boys. But to girl, honor them and say thank yep. you, men and women alike. Yep. And, and quite frankly, in, in a lot of the European conflict regarding Poland, Ukraine, and mm -hmm. Hungary, women fought right in along the lines. Oh, absolutely. With them. They, yeah. were, they, they, were, they were the freedom fighters. They, yeah. were, the ones that, they were the ones that yeah. put it on the line too. And that's what my uncle did, uh, fought in Fly Free Poland. That was his thing. Uh, wow. Yeah. But wow. On, on that note, I guess we'll move yeah. forward sure. with the questions. So we have three questions that we ask, and we're going to open up with question number one. So what inspired you to run in the riding of Brandt? Well, there were there were a few influences. Let me start with my family, my yeah, mom and my dad, and, and they're they're teaching us as a large family. Uh, we are all responsible for each other. We we yeah. slow down when the little one needs a little time. We lead from behind. Uh, yeah. Nobody gets left behind. That's that attitude about and you give back. Uh, they worked very hard. They worked their fingers to the bone. My my parents did to provide for us that uh, we had hand me down clothes. We 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 were not. I would say upper middle class or not wealthy. Uh, we struggled, but at the same time, they made me feel like, what struggle? What are you talking about? Mm. Right? So I, I never grew up thinking that poor was a word that we had to use or even understand. It was, we were surrounded in love, great mo models, and giving back to the community. My mom and dad always, they were on the Gunners Club. They, mm. they, uh, my dad was a hockey coach, and everybody gave back because mm. you did get. Yeah. And so that's that's the one influence. The second influence was uh, a previous government were doing things that I believed against that you don't engage, enrage, and engage mm -hmm. in wedge politics. You don't put one group against the other. You don't tell the one group that they're evil. You don't uh, vilify them and get people against them. Right. You, you have to do things if you're going to make changes, which is inevitable mm -hmm. from all levels and all political stripes. Mm -hmm. You do that collaboratively. You do yeah. that with an understanding of a process and say, look, and even if they don't want it, well, it means that maybe what you want to do is not so smart. Yeah. And if they're saying don't do it, they've got a point to make, so they'll listen to them. And I don't think he did. 
So mm -hmm. I was upset with that, and, 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 and my profession was being attacked. And I said to myself, before retirement, I didn't retire, I was in the middle of my career, mm -hmm. you know what, I love my community that much, and I've given to my community, I did a lot of charity work and, right. and community activism as a teacher, and even before that as a kid, yeah. I, I remember doing leadership things. I said, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is, and I'm running because I really do believe there's a de better way to serve my community yeah. as a politician. Absolutely. So I decided to do that. Good. And that's where this whole thing came from. So the positive and the negative influence were put together to say, now's the time to give it a chance and see what happens. Wow, that's great. So when that moment happened, do you remember when it happened? Like what year that all happened? Like uh, 1998, 99. 98, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so in 1998, I did an evaluation of all the parties. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't give an awful lot of time to the Conservative Party mm -hmm. uh, because it was the one that I was upset with. So mm -hmm. I did look at it. I did look at trying to figure out if there were things inside mm -hmm. that made sense. And there were some that did. Mm -hmm. There were some things that, that were, were proposed that I thought were pretty reasonable. Mm -hmm. But I had to embrace a party that had a bigger tent for me, that, yeah, that it yeah. captured more of what I believed was a social justice side. Yeah. Uh, so you don't walk in in your first term and say 22% cut in, in social services right. and that'll get them, that'll take care of them. So that's this wedge politics, anger yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I, I joined the Liberal Party just a couple of years or a year and a half before, yeah. I made the decision I was going to run and then put my name forward and the party at the time didn't even know who I was. <laughs> uh, and I tell that story to one guy, says, oh, we knew who you were and they no, they weren't chasing me. That's right. So I put my name forward, I did yeah. the evaluation and they said I was a clean candidate, I guess that's what they call yeah. it, a clean candidate. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, got elected on my first try. Wow, that's awesome. And, and since 1999, I've had an absolute uh, honor and privileged to serve my community because that's exactly what we should be doing. Yeah. Serving our community, taking our message to Queen's Park and not having Queen's Park tell us what it's going to do. Right. Maybe you can um, let people know also what, how it works to become Speaker of the House. Oh. Because when you told me about how yeah. you had to go into a second election right yes. after your last election, exactly. I was just... I was awed by the moment. So yeah, like, historically, so how, the yeah. old the old system was that the speaker was appointed by the premier, right, and only the premier, right, and in it, at the federal level by the prime minister and only the prime minister. Right. That changed after uh, some discussion with house leaders of all the parties, and they were saying that you're putting speakers in there that are partisan. So we wanted to get back to the tradition of what the speaker in the parliamentary system was about, and that was a neutral person that you could count on to be a fair referee across the table. So they went to elections. So in the, 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 the time and I decided to, that I wanted to try to be the speaker, we went through the election, it was about 28, 29 days, mm -hmm. and then it took us from that point for another 38, 39 days yeah. to call the house back. So the old speaker was the speaker from the time in which he resigned and right. he didn't run again yes. until we elected the next speaker. He was the speaker through that whole time wow. because that's a, yeah. a quirky part of the process. Right. So then during, uh, after the election was over, I realized that as soon as the house comes back, that's the first thing that has to be and that's the election of the speaker. So I actually had to elect, get, it's almost like another campaign yeah. with all the elected members who yeah. choose by secret ballot, their speaker. Right. Which is very respectful. Nice. So, so that's what I had to go through in order yeah. to become speaker. So it's not like a, like a miscongeniality, but in oh, no, a way no. it kind of is. You're being elected by your peers. And who you, yes, right? and what kind of relationship so, you have with them and trust. Yes. So, oh, yeah. so that means that's I got huge. votes from all three parties. That's amazing. Well, it's because of the way I decided to run my politics, and that is not as partisan as others do, and basically saying there's a good idea and build relationships and the kinds of things that uh, I think politicians actually should be doing. Yeah. Because yeah. Joe Public out there, like uh, the people, yeah. look at how we behave sometimes and they say, a pox on all your houses. Like, just smarten up and get your job done. Yeah. And, and I believe in that. I believe we should just smarten up and get our job done. And quite frankly, that helped me become speaker because I, I'm a believer in that. Yeah, I totally get that. All right, let's go on to question number two. If elected, re-elected, uh, what would you like to have your legacy be? Well, uh, the last election, uh, I came up with something that uh, was not on anyone's party platform, including my own. Uh, but it was something that was absolutely needed in our community. So I, when I first took the nomination, 
I announced that I was going to look for a community-based consultation to get the Detox Rehabilitation Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was on no one else's radar. That's and true. I didn't do it on purpose to try to be different, but I Just looked at it and said, up. our yeah. community needs this. Right. And after my years in school, mm -hmm. I met with parents who said that we've got family problems and addiction is one of them. Mm -hmm. And I kept talking to the hospitals, I kept talking to everybody, and I thought, it's time for us to put this on the table. So, re, you know, in a rejoiceful way, yeah. all of the candidates agreed. So that means that we were all speaking in one voice. And then when we had our public consultation, all those that either people that had addictions or people provided services, we actually built the case to give mm -hmm. to the city and the city took it. So that's the kind of thing I was talking about the last election. This election, mm -hmm. I believe, and it's, this is the first time publicly I'm saying it. Okay. Is that We got a scoop. Uh, you got a scoop. Uh, I believe we should be doing a citizens uh, uh, summit yeah. series Ooh. on seniors. Oh, very good. Close we, to my we, heart. We yeah. do, we do a good job of pieces of the puzzle. Mm. And that the, uh, the, the, the aging committee that, that came out with a report was a good cataloging. Mm. What we haven't done is the actionable. So I'm going right. to I'm I'm uh, proposing that we do, and if I'm reelected, I will do this. Yeah. I'm proposing that we have a series of summits that brings all of those stakeholders together that has any kind of conf confluence with seniors. Right. Police, fire, yeah. uh, hospital, uh, the senior center. Yeah. Uh, that gem that we've got, mm -hmm. the senior center, um, the, the the committee on aging, the roundtable yeah. on poverty, housing. All of those people who have any influence yeah. to, to, let's design something actionable from our community that says, which means we have to bring in the province, we have to bring in the feds, we bring in the municipalities, surrounding areas. How do we design actionables to pull all of those pieces of information we've got together? Mm -hmm. And I would act as the catalyst to bring us together. That's why I call it a series, because you yeah. can't do that in one day. Exactly. So that's, that's my proposal as an actionable after the election if I'm reelected. Wow, that's fantastic. I, I think that's it's overdue. Really fantastic. I, yeah, I, I, I honestly agree. believe it's yeah. overdue, but I, I want to make it clear. It's not a comment, a negative comment, on the no. people that have providing those services now, because there yeah. is an honest attempt to try to coordinate that, but I think we need to have next a... Next level. Uh, yeah, go to the next level, which is we're now going to agree that a summit is going to happen and that oh, there's yeah. nobody that owns a silo of delivery of service mm -hmm. because that's what hurts us the most. Yeah. When we don't share that piece with this piece with that piece or we don't coordinate so that we don't duplicate. Yeah, because that senior event, CARP, Yes, that, and that, CARP, I want them at the yeah, table for sure because they've yeah. got national understanding. They've, yeah. got, they've got sets of things that they want to bring to the forefront, and I agree with that. Yeah. But I think we need to have the whole umbrella yeah. brought together so that we can all work together to find out how we want a livable community for our seniors because they call it the silver tsunami is coming. Well, it's already here, yeah. and it's for us to decide how we're going to do that. Pharmacists, when you think about it. Pharmacists do a fabulous job of making sure that seniors are stopping this this oh, yeah. problem that we've got. Yep. The largest killer of seniors right now is uh, offset offset medications. Medications, yep. right? Yeah. So we need them to the table. We need the hospital to the table. Yep. We need the schools yep. to the table. Absolutely. Post secondary education to the Absolutely, table. Absolutely, yeah. Because all of that is it's this culmination and put it together. So that's that's my proposal. That's awesome. Yeah, because I care give for my folks uh, with them and it's the same thing and I totally get where you're coming from and we always run into a certain thing with meds. Either it's they get the, the lower quality meds or not exactly what the... Uh, and it could be the change doctors, the rules. Absolutely, yeah. So I we totally could come out that. with yeah. ideas and, and concepts that help governments make decisions yeah. on how to change direction. That's good too. Yeah, that's great. All right, question number three. Question number three, 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 got that. The European version and the, and the American version. Three. All right. So what can you say to our viewers right now on how to encourage them to get out and vote? Well, I actually started to talk about that already. Here, yeah. here, here's my challenge. Listen to the story of our veterans. Listen to the story of our seniors. Understand mm -hmm. that their sacrifice might have been different than our sacrifice. Understand their story enough to see the passion that they brought to their freedom. The fact that we never had a boot to our throat before by another country or another regime or another government that did not believe in democracy. We need to hear them tell that story so that we can understand where their passion's coming from. 
And then we might be able to design our own passion of activity for political active, for, uh, to be active. Yeah, yeah. Take a look at your candidates. Look at all of them. Ask them the tougher questions. Ask me the tougher questions. Make sure that you get a chance to say those things that you need to. Don't fall back on the excuse of it's somebody else's problem mm -hmm. or they're all a bunch of thieves. They're all a bunch of liars. That's not true. What's true is you can become the activist with your vote alone. But then if you participate, if you tweet, if you mm -hmm. use the social media, if you use snail mail, if you use a <laughs> telephone, it doesn't matter. Use your feet. Pick up a sign, get involved, and understand the story of yesterday because that mm -hmm. teaches us how to prepare ourselves for the future. And yes, challenge everybody to come up with different ways in which to look at things. Is it always right to simply say, government's too big, cut it all? Historically, that's not actually factual. Mm. Uh, government is a friend. Government can be a valuable tool in our day-to-day -day lives. It's the balance of how we do that. So I would encourage the young people to engage yourselves in a short conversation about that specific issue with the elders. Mm. Because they have stories to tell. They can tell you, why did I get involved in the freedom fight? Why did yeah. I step forward? I might not have a boot to my throat, but I have to recognize that the re-engagement of the Ukraine issue yeah. Yeah. Is, is the vigilance we must maintain on an ongoing basis. Because at any given time, somebody could come along and say, you know what? Mm. I want to put a boot on their throat again. And nobody's going to say anything. It's time for us to say something, and I would encourage all of you to vote. Awesome. I don't know what else we can say on that point. That was brilliant way to say that one. That was awesome. Thank you. Well, now, so we're going to wrap it up, and thank you very much for being here. We do appreciate it. How can people find out to get a hold of you, your information? How do they call you? Where are you located? Where are they finding you? Uh, my campaign office is mm -hmm. at uh, 627 Park Road North. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in a strip mall just towards uh, St. George as you go out. Yeah. Uh, Park Road North yeah, it's towards the, 99. Yeah, that's right near the Woodland Cultural Center. Or, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And then that and then you've got, um, what else is out there? The Sweet Nothings or something like that? Uh, bakery shop that's oh. also there too? Or? <laughs> yeah, I think there's a, there's a Tai Chi, there's a Tai Chi Center. Yeah. And then there's a veterinarian there. Oh yeah, and, that's uh, right. Yeah, there, yeah. And I think in the near future, it's on the same road, there's a British pub that's going to open. Oh, right, yes. Uh, so basically that strip along Park Road North uh, right. off of West Street all the way up and then into, turns into Park Road North. Yep. We're in that strip mall up there. And you're on so Facebook? I'm on, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook. Yep. And uh, it, more importantly uh, yep. than just trying to locate me, um, I, I would appreciate your vote on June, in June because, uh, June 12th mm -hmm. on Thursday, uh, because I, I see it as a uh, job appraisal. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not afraid to put my record on the, on the table mm -hmm. and say, if you believe that I've been a, a, an honest and hardworking and passionate person for my community, mm -hmm. uh, I would love to have another opportunity to show that. And uh, I've not always been a puppet to anybody. <laughs> uh, I, I, tend, I tend to have the reputation of not doing that. And it's not, about, it's not about just kind of the talking heads. This yeah. is about uh, how can we work together to build a better community, and I'm prepared to do that. Awesome. And the phone number they can reach you at? Uh, you would have to ask me. That, <laughs> I, it's okay. We don't need to work. We can, can edit that we'll, one. We'll edit up and put, put it on the bottom of the screen. And Your personal cell number? Eh? <laughs> I think most people know it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, anyways, they can find you on uh, your election uh, platform. Platform and material yeah, will be there. On the Facebook office. and it's mm -hmm. online. And, 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 I, yeah. and I Twitter as much as I can That's during, true. during the campaign. It's, but I don't, Twitter about, uh, I don't Twitter about how bad the other guys are or how great nope. I am. That's true. What I I tend to do is I Twitter about what's going on in the community that's and that's not going to change uh, even during the election so if there's an event that's going on that I would normally attend as MPP I'm mm -hmm. going to attend as candidate yeah uh, and that um, I, I think people need to know what's going on in our community so that's Perfect. precisely why I, I use Twitter that's awesome well thank you very much for your time we really do appreciate it good luck in the election thank you very and much. Uh, on behalf of myself and Matt Joniak and the Polish Hall thank you for everything you've done for our community we really appreciate it Dzień dobry. <laughs> right on okay thanks guys and that's a wrap <laughs>